Hey, what's up followers? Dave here from CNC3D. So in this video today, we are going to be talking about how to interface a VFD, specifically a HY or Huan Yang VFD to one of our Nighthawk controllers. And we're gonna talk about how to troubleshoot this. Basically, this video has come about because quite a few of you have had troubles uh, working with your X-Pro V5 to a HY VFD. And basically you've switched to a Nighthawk in order to try to alleviate that. Um, and you're still encountering some issues. So just before we sort of jump into it right now, the reason why we have created this video is the HY VFDs are known to be extremely troublesome. They're very inconsistent between models. So the exact same model number may require different wiring configurations, may require different settings changes um, in order to accept a standard zero to 10 volt input that traditionally every single, pretty much every single VFD on the planet has done for many years. So that is the output that our Nighthawk has, which is a zero to 10 volt signal for the speed. Um, so let's just jump straight in and start with you basically setting up your controller in order to accept VFD signals. So we just have a Nighthawk here on our test bench. We've just connected up to it here in Commander and we've gone straight over here to the operations tab. Now, once you are in the operation tab, you'll notice that we have an operate using option and you have the option in here of spindle or laser. So if you are using a spindle, definitely make sure it is in spindle mode. Now to the right here, you'll see that there is a minimum and maximum power value. So what this is, is this is basically a linear scale um, of numbers between zero to 10 volts. So essentially with the minimum being set to zero, that will mean if you send an S zero, then it will be zero volts. And if you send an S24,000, then it will be 10 volts or as close to as possible. So most of you may have a number in here like 1000, which is very common. It is the default value in there, which may be great for laser projects, but probably not the best for spindle based projects. So if you want to set this value accordingly, take a look at your spindle and just check what the maximum RPM value of your spindle is. In the case of most 1.5 kilowatt and 2.2 kilowatt VFDs and spindles, they are typically 24,000 RPM max. Some can be 30, but you should be able to find that on the build plate itself of the spindle. So what you wanna do is find out what that is and just enter in this value here as the maximum. Now, the majority of your CAM programs out there they are going to reference the exact RPM. So based on how they are in your tool library. So this applies to uh, Carveco, to Vectric and Fusion 360. So when it goes to send S values, it will actually send the specific RPM value, which could be a maximum of 24,000. So we're gonna leave this in here. Now it is important to note as well, and we'll just go and have a look at this here. If we go to the run job tab, so let's assume, so after we've changed the setting, we'll just hit update. If we go to the run job tab here and go down the bottom, you'll see that you have an on command, which is M3, and then an S12,000 here currently. So let's say that we were to put in here 24,000 and hit the on button there. What would happen is your spindle should theoretically ramp up to 24,000 RPM, provided that it's been configured correctly. Now that would mean that the voltage output coming from the Nighthawk to the VFD should be 10 volts or very close to. Now, if we were to change this number here to 12,000 and hit the on button here, it should actually drop the power down to five volts because it's right in the middle between 24,000 and our zero. So then if zero is zero volts and 24,000 is 10, then 12,000 would be five volts. So you can definitively test this. We're gonna show you how to do that in the second half of this video. But for right now, we're just gonna show you how to actually configure your VFD. So now that we know that this is working here, you may also notice in this on button, you do have the option of either an M3 or an M4. So if you are in spindle mode, so if we go to operation and it's in operate spindle, what that would typically do is that would M3 would tell your VFD to go in a forward direction and an M4 would tell it to go in a reverse direction. In the case of a Nighthawk V1 communicating with a HY VFD, the only option that you really have is forward. You cannot go in reverse on a V1 Nighthawk. Um, if you have a V2 Nighthawk, then you definitely can go in forward or reverse. 
But at the point of time in making this video, all of you are pretty much on a V1 Nighthawk. So you will only ever go one direction, which is forward, which for 99% of applications, you never actually really need to go in reverse. Even when you're thread milling and things like that, you don't actually thread into a hole and back out. Um, you essentially just cut your threads in the same forward direction all the time because that's the direction of the blades on every single cutter. They always face one side. So very rarely do you actually ever need to go backwards. So as long as you've got it going one way, that's probably fine. So let's have a quick look here at the wiring and things you can do to try to troubleshoot potential issues. So we'll just jump in here. As you can see, we've got in the VFD cheat sheet, there is a link for this in the description of this video. So you can find this cheat sheet. Um, and basically what we've got here is a simple wiring diagram where we go from the VFD port on the Nighthawk and we talk to a HY VFD. Now, you will notice that there is this pink bridge between DCM and ACM. So let's assume that you have followed this wiring diagram perfectly and you're still experiencing issues communicating with your VFD. The one of the most common things that you can, can do or one of the biggest mistakes that you can make is not flipping this switch over here. So this little brass and plastic pin here it can pull out of there and move over to this side. So it can be on this pin and the middle, as opposed to being on this pin in here. But you definitely want it to be on this VI side, not on the VR side. And what that does is that tells the VFD that you are going to be controlling it via signals, as opposed to you trying to control it through the front panel, which is typically just a potentiometer, which is a resistor. So that's what the VR stands for. And the VI stands for signal basically. So the next thing that you can try to do to troubleshoot faults, you will notice we have this pink bridge across here between ACM and DCM. Um, this particular wiring diagram is the exact same wiring that we use on the 1.5 kilowatt HYVFD on our test bench that we pre-test every single Nighthawk on. Not one Nighthawk leaves our factory without being able to work on that VFD. So we unequivocally 100% know that it definitely does work with a HY VFD before it leaves our factory. So we've specifically done this due to the volatile nature of HY VFDs. So we have this bridge across ACM and DCM at the bottom here. Now, some people have completely removed this bridge and that has resolved their issue. Other users have, instead of having the bridge on the bottom of DCM and ACM, have moved it to the top DCM and ACM here. So they've got the bridge going across this way instead. Um, so they've basically doubled up their wire here and it goes across to there. And that has also resolved their issue too. So you can try doing both of those. If you are not sure and you're not comfortable with doing the wiring on your VFD, then definitely seek advice from a licensed electrician. A lot of them are trained in these. They've experienced a lot of VFDs before. So definitely do that if you are not comfortable or confident doing it yourself. What we're going to do now, let's assume that you've gone through and the standard uh, DCM ACM wiring, that doesn't work for you. You've then removed that bridge and that doesn't work for you. And then you've moved it to the DCM and ACM and that also doesn't work for you. The next thing to really do at this point in time is to obviously check your settings. Now, a lot of people do ask the question, could it potentially be a problem with the Nighthawk? Um, look, a lot of people have, have asked this question and it's never actually been the case. It's always either been a wiring issue or a settings issue with the VFD. Unfortunately, there is over 250 settings in these VFDs, so they are rather complex and you have no real idea as to what the values are going to be for any of them. They can vary from every single one that comes out of that factory can have different values in there. So it's important for you to be able to test that the Nighthawk is actually working. So in the next half of this video, we're going to show you how you can test whether or not the Nighthawk is definitely putting out the correct voltages. So let's go ahead and do that now. Uh, okay, so we're just sitting here on our Nighthawk bench. We've just got this Nighthawk that's just been assembled and tested by the team. And the final step is for us to test whether or not it will work on one of these HY 1.5 kilowatt VFDs. Now, these uh, uh, HY VFDs, they are actually quite troublesome. They're one of the most difficult VFDs in the world to work with. 
uh, the vendor support is extremely low um, and has shifted a lot of questions towards us, especially for those of you who have gone from an X-Pro V5 and had issues with one of these VFDs to a Nighthawk in order to try to resolve the issue. Um, we actually pretest every single Nighthawk that leaves our factory on this exact HY 1.5 kilowatt VFD. So at the moment, we just have the wiring in here for the VFD port. So you can see the order of things. The red wire is zero to 10 volts. The forward is green. The reverse is yellow and the blue is ACM DCM. Now we are following our VFD cheat sheet here. So for those of you that haven't seen this document, there'll be a link in the description for this, but we have done this exact wiring to this VFD. So from this cable traveling around here, it goes all the way through and wires up directly inside here. Now let's assume you have gone through and followed the VFD cheat sheet and you still can't get your VFD to go. Look, 99% of the time, it is a VFD setting itself. So it's very difficult for us here at CNC3D to be able to provide advice or support for a third party product. But what we can help you do is determine whether or not the Nighthawk is actually doing the right thing for the VFD. And so the most important thing for you to tell whether or not the Nighthawk is working correctly is whether or not these signals are coming out, specifically the zero to 10 volt value. So we've just got a multimeter here that we've just put into volts mode. And what you wanna do is put your red probe on the zero to 10 volt signal and your black one on the ACM DCM. Now, if we take a look at the current voltage here, it's very low, it's 3.5 millivolts, which is 0 0.003 volts. Now, if we go into commander over here, we can actually go through and try to turn this on. So this is at maximum right now. And you can see our voltage has gone up to 9.5 volts. So we know that that's pretty close to 10 volts, so that's giving us a pretty good speed on there. Now, if we were to change our value here from the maximum value to say 12,000, which is what we have programmed, then we can definitely get it to go down to five volts and you can hear that decelerating. So, and then of course, if we hit the stop button in Commander, we go down to zero volts as well. And so that's an easy way to test. So that means that this Nighthawk is definitely putting out the zero to 10 volts that this VFD is receiving. And basically the VFD should correspond to it. Now, if it's not working, very common mistakes that you can make with these VFDs is not appropriately switching the jumper, which is covered in the manual just here. And you can see that on there. And that needs to be on the VI, not the VR section. And basically, that switch is just on the side over here. You can just see it in there, the VI and the VR. So you need to make sure that that is definitely set to VI and not VR. That is a common mistake that a lot of users make. If you have done that and you have followed the wiring correctly, another solution, and this is very odd between different manufacturers, the white wire that we actually have in here is our ACM to DCM jumper bridge. So it is covered in the VFD cheat sheet to put that wire in there. You can see it just here where we bridge ACM and DCM with the pink there. So please feel free to remove that and see whether or not that does resolve the issue for you. And then just wire it directly through to the ACM. Now, an important thing for you to do is to go through your manual. Now on page 19 of this particular one, and it may differ for you, you can see here that all of the PD settings of the VFD are definitely covered in here in order from one all the way through to, I think it's just over 200. We're just having a look now. Yeah, it goes all the way up to 250 by the looks. So there is quite a few of these settings in here. And more than likely, um, it'll be something in here that is restricting the Nighthawk from be being able to run at the power or the voltage that you want it to actually run at or the speed you want it to run at. Um, now, if you go into our VFD cheat sheet, you will see that we actually have in here a list of settings for the 1.5 kilowatt HY VFD and a 2.2 kilowatt HY VFD as well. Um, because they are pretty troublesome. So there's our full list in there of settings. So as, as I said, in the description, there will be a link for where you can find the cheat sheet. Um, we know that these settings work. 
Just be very, very careful when you are updating settings. You will notice at the very start of this document, we have some very stern writing on here on these first pages. So make sure to read these through very, very well. Um, look, we've tried our best to help you guys out as much as possible. Um, we, we have to work through these HY issues just like you guys do as well. So we've done our best here, but please be advised if you're not comfortable changing settings on your VFD, they are extremely dangerous. So where it says here, safety warning, please read. If you do follow that diagram and your VFD does explode like a hand grenade, CNC 3D is not responsible for it. So if you are not competent or not comfortable doing it, get in touch with a local licensed electrician or reach out to a more experienced person that may be able to assist you. Um, but other than that, the wiring for these VFDs is very, very simple. Basically, there's literally four wires that links it together, a zero to 10 volt, a forward, a reverse, and an ACM DCM signal. Now you may be able to, if you do remove that jumper off there again, you may be able to wire directly to the ACM pin on the actual uh, VFD. Alternatively, you may be able to wire it into the DCM as well. So either DCM or ACM, try those and see how you go. And that may resolve your issue. So hopefully, this helps you guys try to determine exactly what's going on with your HY VFD um, to get it working on the standard 0 to 10 volt signals. Thanks guys, have a great day.